Welcome back to a new video. This video is going to be about loss functions. This video is going to be one of the videos that I will be adding into the deep learning with PyTorch series. You can reach to that playlist from the cards of this video. Let's start coding. In deep learning, loss refers to a measure of how well a machine learning model is performing on a given task. It quantifies the difference between the predicted output of the model and the actual ground truth labels. The goal during the training phase is to minimize this loss, as doing so indicates that the model is getting closer to making accurate predictions. So let's start by importing the torch and importing the torch.neural network as neural network. So after that we will say we are going to create two tensors and we are going to accept them as the truth labels and the predictions from the model. So I'm going to create something like target and it's going to be torch.random and I will say 5 like this and after that what we are going to have in here is like I need to open one more like this I'm just going to call the target and you will see we have a 5 number randomized tensor so after that I'm going to create something like predicted and it's going to be like torch.random 5 like this and I'm just going to call the predicted in here and here we have 5 again so let's start with the mean squared error loss Mean squared error measures the average squared difference between predicted and actual values. So, we will say something like mean squared error loss is going to be nail network dot mean squared error loss, and then we will say loss is going to be mean squared error loss, predicted and target. So after that, we can just call our loss, and our loss is 0.08. So we use PyTorch mean squared error loss to compute this loss for a set of predictions and corresponding the labels, truth labels. Great. Let's talk about cross entropy loss. So for the each loss type, I'm going to create this target and predict the thing again so you can understand the concept better. So the cross entropy loss is commonly used for classification problems. I will say target is going to be torch.random integer 3 and 5 like this and I'm going to create data type as torch.long and after that we can just check our target and it's like that just like a classification problem and predicted is going to be like torch.random53 we can go like this and I'm going to call the predicted here it is so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to apply softmax to predicted logits like predicted probabilities is going to be neural network that functional that softmax predicted and we will say dimension is going to be one so after that we can just say like cross entropy loss is going to be neural network cross entropy loss and then we will say loss is going to be cross entropy loss predicted and target after that we can just call loss and here is our loss so in the code we used PyTorch cross entropy loss and we applied softmax to predicted logits. This loss quantifies the difference between predicted class probabilities and actual class labels. So let's talk about Huber loss. Huber loss combines the mean squared error and mean absolute error. So what we will say is we are going to create target like torch.random5 and we are going to call the target for seeing it. I will say predicted and it's going to be torch.random 5 like this and then I'm going to create something like Huber loss and it's going to be nail network that smooth L1 loss and then I'm going to say loss is going to be Huber loss predicted and target actually I need to separate them like that and I'm going to call the loss great so in our code we use PyTorch smooth L1 loss to calculate the Huber loss. Great. By the way, at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about all of these loss types and the advantages and disadvantages of them. So let's keep with binary cross entropy loss. Binary cross entropy loss is used for binary classification problems. It measures the difference between predicted probabilities and actual binary labels. So what we are going to do is, I'm going to say target is going to be like, actually we can just use the same in here, 
like I'm going to call the target and then actually let's create a new one I will say target and torch that random five like this target I'm going to call that I'm going to say predicted is going to be like torch that random five and then what I'm going to say is I'm going to call the predicted and then binary cross entropy loss is going to be like lowercase letters is going to be neural network that binary cross entropy loss and we will say loss is going to be binary cross entropy loss predicted and target so this isn't the case that you are going to want to use binary cross entropy loss since the target is not like two class like you are going to use that in a two class like one and two or zero and one two classes is the best use case for this i'm just going to call the loss and we will see that we have a tensor in here but binary cross entropy loss is better at tasks like that so if your data if your labels are like one and zero one and zero for all of them you can use this one great so so let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of them mean skirt error is advantages in it's widely used for regression tasks and smooth optimization landscapes the negative part of that is it's sensitive to outliers might not perform well with non-gaussian distributions at the cross entropy loss the advantages are like commonly used for classification problems encourages model to output accurate probabilities and the negative part of it is sensitive to imbalanced data sets requires careful handling of class imbalances at the huber loss side it's it has advantages like it's robust to outliers balances mean squared error and mean absolute error and negative part of that is requires tuning of the delta parameter may not perform well if delta is chosen poorly so lastly binary cross entropy loss it has advantages like it's suitable for binary classification like one and zero and it penalizes deviations from true class probabilities and the negative part of that is it's sensitive to class imbalances may not generalize well to multi-class scenarios great so that was all for the coding part thanks for watching the video i'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and python programming you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this i shared a free data science bootcamp where i teach python pandas numpy matplotlib plotly seaborn and scikit-learn with three projects the video is about seven hours and it's completely free you can just reach to that video from the cards of this video or the link in the description